Good evening, Lake Orion. Welcome to History Now here on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Teramina. This episode, I want to talk about something that I am really, really much a fan of that I was a fan of back when I was young. And in many ways, I still am a fan to this day. And that is a video game legend and also who's going to actually have its own movie come out in November of 2019. And that is Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, people will ask, why am I a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog? Well, it's simple. First things first, I love the hero-villain concept. And um, back when I was younger, that was kind of one of the driving points between who was considered a hero, who was considered a villain, who was considered an anti-hero. And in my, in my case, when I was younger, this was Sonic the Hedgehog. And, um, you know, it was something that stuck with me ever since when I was a young boy. And it kind of further helped add to my... Um, creativity complexes back in when I was younger and in many ways I still use those concepts today and this is where it kind of started was with when I started liking Sonic the Hedgehog. Now this, uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog was part of the is part of the video game franchise which is known as Sega which is a company that's based in Japan. They needed to find a franchise character and to also to compete with Nintendo, who Nintendo had Super has Super Mario and um, Luigi and Koopa and or slash Bowser and Donkey Kong, and um, so the video game franchise, the character, ended up being Sonic the Hedgehog. The concept, the concept of Sonic the Hedgehog was basically a blue hedgehog with supersonic speed. Which was the which in the goal was to stop a mad scientist, which I will go over, which I'll go over when do, doing the character descriptions from taking over the world on world domination. Now, Sonic was first formed in 1991, and the first video game to ever come out from that from the Sonic the Hedgehog series was called Sonic the Hedgehog, based in from, based off in June 23rd, 1991, which it really focused on two characters at that point, which was Sonic the Hedgehog and this mad scientist that was bent on world domination. Now, the characters I want to talk about is, obviously I'll first talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, i make mention briefly, he's a blue hedgehog with supersonic speed with the intent of keeping peace and freedom in the, gal in the, in the world. And um, he also wanted to make sure that everything was, was all right with the world. And he had supersonic speed, which he was one of the fastest, at that time, the fastest in the world. So he had supersonic speed. And he also was very caring for his friends, very caring for his family. And... He also, his rival was um, the mad scientist known as Dr. Ivo Robotnik, who would go through several transformations and eventually become Dr. Eggman, which was focused on, his goal, simply put, was on world domination. And he actually became the main rival of Sonic the Hedgehog, and those two would fight and clash in multiple battles, not just in the video games, but throughout comics and TV shows. I mean, it was just that rivalry, you know, that created the concept of who was the good guy, who was the bad guy, and it also had animals to it, too. Sonic was a hedgehog, and Robotnik was a mad scientist. Now, we would introduce other characters in um, 1992, a year, a year after 1991. Sonic 2 came out, and... Sonic had an ally, which was a two-tailed fox named Miles Prouder, also known as Tails. So Tails would often ally and aid Sonic. He also, we also had fly, two flying tails and would often fly Sonic whenever he needed to. And also Tails was quite a flyer. Tails would often fly the, would often fly Sonic on an airplane, and um, just to further help Sonic in his battle against Dr. Robotnik to prevent, 
to prevent world domination. Now, in 1994, two years later, we would have the introduction of a red Edgekana, a treasure hunter named Knuckles. Um, Knuckles' concept is pretty simple. Knuckles and Robotnik, at first, Robotnik would, would aid Knuckles. Knuckles was considered a um, treasure hunter, the guardian of the Chaos Emerald, which is a major green gem. And um, there would be seven of these emeralds. Knuckles was in charge of the main one. So Robotnik would deceive Knuckles and trick Knuckles into believing that he was an ally that he would help protect, help aid. And Knuckles at this time was the head of, was in charge of the floating island and was guarding the Master Emerald. And Robotnik had said that Sonic was out to steal the Emerald. And this would cause several clashes between Sonic and Knuckles until Knuckles would realize that Knuckles was, dece was deceived by Robotnik and Knuckles would eventually end up aiding Sonic in his battle against Dr. Robotnik and his allies. Now, Sonic 3 was when we first find out about Knuckles. And, um, you know, Knuckles was aiding Robotnik at the time and um, trying to prevent Sonic from getting the emeralds. And also, we'd have a better version, a better introduction of Knuckles in the Sonic and Knuckles video game as well in... Um, which both of those were done in 1994. The goal was, at that point, was to have Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles go together before they, off the, before they decided to split it up. And it ended up having Sonic 3. And eventually, with the Sega Gears, with Sega Genesis, which was the first video, which was the first video set, then you had Sega Saturn. And, you know, the goal was, and then you had and Sega Game Gear. You had the, um, you know, so once they had Sega, once they, you could also put both discs together and you could have Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Or also with Sonic 2, which you can combine Sonic 2 and Sonic and Knuckles. And Knuckles becomes a playable character in Sonic 2, having to fight Robotnik as well. Now, one of my more unique favorite characters was is Knack the Weasel, or Fang the Sniper, which he is a purple bounty hunter bent on hunting for money. And he, there were episodes where he would capture Sonic and for a bounty and give Sonic up to Dr. Robotnik. Um, this concept was more in Sonic Triple Trouble, which was 1994, also in 1994, where you had both, you had both another concept of Robotnik tricking Knuckles, and then Knack also trying to get a bounty and causing trouble himself. And um, Sonic had to overcome three challengers, which in this case was Knuckles, Knack, and um, Robotnik, and defeated them all. And um, ultimately defeated them all and overcame all three challengers. Eventually. Knuckles realized the error of his ways, and um, the rest is history. Um, when I come back, I want to talk about the continued success, which I'm going to talk about the comics version and also the TV adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog when we return to History Now here on ONTV. Lake Orion families are invited to hop on over to the Orient Center for the 2019 Bunny Bop on Saturday, April 13th, beginning at 9.30 a.m. Pose for a photo with the Easter Bunny, enjoy refreshments, create crafts, and take part in a hunt for Easter eggs filled with candy and other surprises. Children will be divided by age groups and are encouraged to bring their own basket. As for the older kids in the family, Orion Township is holding its first ever flashlight egg hunt on Thursday, April 11th at 7.45 p.m. Kids aged 9 to 15 are invited to come out to Fort Pontiac at Camp Agawam to hunt for Easter eggs in the dark. There will be plenty of photo opportunities at the 2019 Bunny Bop and Flashlight Egg Hunt. For more information, call 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com. Thank you. 
Welcome back to History Now here on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Termina. Um, I want to continue my talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, it's very, very interesting that not just the video game concept, but also Sonic the Hedgehog would be very successful in both the comic book and in the TV, in the TV adventures, too. Um, before I talk about that, I want to talk about, um, I made mention of the Chaos Emeralds. One of Robotnik's main goals was to control the Master Emerald, but also to get seven smaller Chaos Emeralds, which the colors were red, purple, yellow, blue, gray, orange, and green. Now, what would further, well, it would cause Robotnik to go after them because it would make him that much more powerful, and also he had control of a, further enhance his machines and his technology. And then, so, but Sonic's power was based off rings. He, if, he got, if he collected more rings, more power to Sonic, where he would potentially become what you call Super Sonic, where he would, he would eventually turn from blue to yellow, and he would be a lot more powerful when he gets a certain amount of rings. Now, Sonic and Tails both enjoyed chili dogs, which that ended up being the favorite food for both Sonic and for Tails. Um, they both loved their chili dogs. Um, in 1992, a couple things came out, and which was um, Archie, Archie Comics had a Sonic the Hedgehog series from 1992, which lasted till 2016, which focused more on, and I'll go over this show in a minute, but as a result of the Sonic 2 success, a TV show came out called The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, there was only one season of it, but it ended up being very, very entertaining. It was very funny. It appealed to kids, but at the same time, you had the concepts where, you know, the hero-villain concept was established, and you had the, um, you had some really, really funny, entertaining, um, you know, scenes where Sonic would dress up to fool the major villains. You had two robots, Scratch and Grounder, who were seen as allies of Robotnik. Um, Robotnik was, um, yeah, at the end, he would always say, I hate that hedgehog, knowing full well that he was defeated. Um, Sonic and Tails would have some allies. Tails was in here too, because you gotta remember, we're looking at Sonic 2 concepts. So, Sonic and Tails would often go on these adventures, either to antagonize or instigate Robotnik, or um, try to stop Robotnik from accomplishing his goals, which his goal was to conquer Mobius, which is the planet, in any way he could. And, and it was also, it was very, very light. It was very, what I mean light was, it was very mild manner. It was hilarious. It was funny. It was not, um, it was more, it was more on the lines of appealing to kids, younger kids. They would have an ending of Sonic Says, basically, where they would give kids, encourage kids to do the right things and teach them what is right and wrong. I mean, it was just overall a great show. It went one season, but a lot of the episodes were entertaining. That even watching as a kid, they were really, really fun. Watching now, they were you still there's still some chuckles, still some laughs, and um, it was really, really exciting to see. Um, in 1990 and 1992, also we had the introduction of Archie Comics, which. Focus, which had a series on Sonic the Hedgehog, which went from 1992 to 2016, as I mentioned earlier. But they also introduced a newer, darker version of Sonic the Hedgehog, which focused on, instead of Robotnik being much more comedy, much more... It was a very darker version of Robotnik, who also went by his... initially went by his name of Julian before denouncing and becoming Robotnik. Now... At this point, Robotnik had also had SWAT bots, had um, robots that were allied to him, was also in the process of roboticizing main characters 
And um, he would also ultimately roboticize several, several people, um, several, not just people, but several animals as well, including Sonic's uncle, Uncle Chuck. He also had an ally, which was his nephew, Snively, which he, which, which he would aid Robotnik, but also would ultimately, later on, turn against Robotnik. And um, when Robotnik, a new version of him, became Dr. Eggman, Snively would aid Dr. Eggman as well. Now, Sonic had his allies as well. Outside of Tails, which I've made mention to, Tails was often seen as Sonic's little buddy, aiding Sonic whenever need be. They were part of a group called the Knothole Freedom Fighters, which the Knothole Village, which was a territory which Robotnik was trying to occupy, make it darker. It was really one of the only bright spots in Knothole. Uh, Sonic had a love interest in Sally Acorn, who was a chipmunk. Very strong leader, seen as a leader. She was a princess. Her father, King Acorn, had been roboticized by Robotnik, and she was trying to seek revenge for her dad. She also had an artificial intelligence. If you watch the Avengers, you notice the artificial intelligence is Jarvis. Well, in Sonic's case, or in Sally's case, the artificial intelligence was called Nicole. And um, when I go over the comics, in the comics, Sally also has a relationship with Knuckles, which was based off of friendship more so than, um, than, than love. And, but Knuckles always cared about Sally. Um, but Sonic and Sally became love interests. Um, Sally loved Sonic. Sonic later on would grow to love Sally. And... Um, there would be attempts to marry, but they have a very, very close relationship until Sally ultimately decided to leave Sonic and um, the rest was history. They also introduced Bunny Rabbit, who was a cyborg rabbit. She was very strong. She was half roboticized by Robotnik. So she was half a rabbit, half a cyborg, but she was able to control her emotions using be using her bunny side, her rabbit side, while overcoming having able to control her cyborg side, but she is a very strong character. Um, and she would eventually fall in love with a guy, with a fox, who had a French accent named Antoine de Colette, who was, at first, who was also seen as a fighter, but also would be a coward as well. Antoine would be somebody that, you know, he tried to appeal to Sally. He had loved Sally at first and would try to find in any way to impress Sally. He could not stand Sonic. He grew jealous of Sonic because that was who Sally's love interest was with Sonic when Antoine wanted it to be him. Antoine would grow to be the military general at first. And um, Antoine would also... A would be aiding at times, but he also was seen as the, the coward, but also the voice of reason at times. But eventually, Antoine and Bunny would fall in love with each other, and they would eventually marry and have children together. Uncle Chuck, I made mention, Sonic's uncle, he was roboticized. He would go against his nephew, but he would also aid his nephew once he had control of his mind and would often sabotage Robotnik's um, troops and allies. Um, also, we had um, Rotor the Walrus, who was um, intelligent, laid back. He was also a mechanic and an inventor. He often relate, related to Tails. Tails often hung out with him a lot. Um, he was very laid back. He lacked self-confidence, which was his one weakness, was but he was also very supportive, very friendly, aided when need to. Then the last ally was a young dragon named Dulcie. Dulcie who, who also had a knock for knowing when people were telling the truth or when they were lying. But she aided Sonic and Sally consistently. And um, more often than not, they would have two episodes, two seasons, not episodes, but two seasons 
of Sonic the Hedgehog, which went from 1993 to 1994. And that was where the success of the comic book came off of, which was Sonic the Hedgehog in the comic and the Archie comics, and those were how those were linked. Now, a lot of the video games became books. Sonic and Knuckles and Sonic Triple Trouble were two major ones that became that were that became they had different concepts, but they were also different they also followed the same similarity reasons as their video game predecessors. The other one is Knuckles Chaotic, where Knuckles would have his own version of quote freedom fighters, but in this case they were defending the fro the floating island. Victor the Crocodile, Charmony the Bee, Mighty the Armadillo, Espo the Chameleon, Archimedes, which was a fire ant, all of them would aid Knuckles in his battle to protect the floating island against the forces of evil, particularly Robotnik, Mecha Sonic, who, which was Sonic once he was finally roboticized, and he would become Mecha Sonic until Knuckles ultimately would defeat Mecha Sonic, also becoming Mecha Knuckles in the process, and de-roboticizing Sonic, and also Dimitri, who was Energek, and the, who was also an Inchkanon, which they would, which there was one of Knuckles' ancestors, would ultimately fight Knuckles and um, ultimately lose to Knuckles. Um, I wanted to, when we return to history now, I wanted to talk about the other characters of Sonic the Hedgehog. Also go and talk about Sonic X briefly, and then Sonic the new movie that's coming out in November 2019. Well, see you in a few. Hi, I have some exciting news in case you haven't heard. Uh, the Orion Chamber is hosting a woman in business conference. Um, it's going to be on Tuesday, March 19th from 11 o'clock to 1 at Kings Court Castle in Canterbury Village. Um, it's going to be beautifully decorated by uh, something fabulous, which brings me to the speakers. They're going to have Kimberly Allen, who owns something fabulous, along with Susan Kruger and Carrie Birmingham, along with, oh, and the keynote speaker is Angela Moore. She's president of The Body Principle. The cost is very inexpensive. It's less than the cost of a professional headshot. Why do I bring this up? Because they have invited me, Paula, with Paula Krizawa Photography, to uh, photograph all the people that attend um, a free headshot. So um, if you have not uh, registered. You need to do that very soon. They're closing the registration quickly. And I heard the food was going to be amazing, so hopefully they'll feed me. Um, if you want any tips on how to get the best head chat, um, please look at my video. It's on my website, uh, Paula Krizawa Photography. Thank you so much and enjoy the conference. Welcome back to History Now here on ON TV. I'm your host, Anthony Terramina. This one I'm having a lot of fun of because, as I made mention earlier, when I was younger, I always enjoyed Sonic the Hedgehog. So I wanted to talk to you guys, the viewers, about Sonic the Hedgehog and the history of Sonic the Hedgehog. Now I want to talk about some other characters that would occur later on during the, this is like 1992, 94-ish type of, there are other characters, Amy Rose comes to mind. She is a pink hedgehog who would also eventually become Sonic's love interest as well. Now, Amy in the comics was a young hedgehog who was very sympathetic to Sonic, but then was often seen as a kid, but would eventually become Sonic's love interest in um, Idol, even though Sonic didn't feel that way about her. Other characters were Cream and Cheese. Cream and Cheese, though they were not fighters, Amy Rose was actually a fighter. She had a big hammer, and she would hammer robots. She would hammer anything that moved, sometimes for good, sometimes for bad. Cream and Cheese were not fighters. They actually were helping whenever they needed to. They aided Sonic whenever they needed to. And um, this would be really, really important for Sonic because Sonic needed a lot of allies, and they would also aid Sonic as well. Now, Sonic did have his fair share of new villains outside of Robotnik, 
slash Dr. Eggman, Rouge the Bat was a very deceptive bat, very similar to Knack the Weasel, where there was a, a love for diamonds and chaos emeralds and jewelry. This was Rouge the Bat. Rouge was very much a sneaky, a lot like Madame Rouge. That's where the concept of Rouge the Bat came from. Very deceptive, but very cunning, very smart bat. A lady bat as well. Uh, she would also grow to become one of Knuckles' rivals as well. And um, she just was very, very, very sneaky. Uh, another major villain would be Shadow the Hedgehog. Would be Sh Shadow ended up becoming a rival of Sonic's. And um, Sonic and Shadow would engage in several vicious duels. Shadow would end up becoming one of Sonic's rivals, just like when Knuckles was, just like when um, Knack the Weasel or, you know, or Rouge the Bat. Shadow was one of Sonic's biggest rivals, and um, Shadow would ultimately also fight Knuckles, fight Tails. I mean, it was just, you know, Sonic needed a rival, and Shadow ended up eventually becoming that rival. Now, there was two more that came, two more TV series that came. A lesser known series back in 1999 was Sonic Underground, which focused mostly on Sonic and Amy Rose and um, Knuckles was in there. Um, that only just like had one season and it was not very well received amongst Sonic fans. The one that got more received was Sonic X which there's a comic book series out for it. Um, Sonic, and there's also the TV show that came out. In 2003 to 2004, there was three seasons of Sonic X. Now, the focal point is you had, at that point, you had Sonic, you had Robotnik, you had Tails, you had Knuckles, you had the Chaotic. Um, I wish they would have had Knack the Weasel, but they didn't. Uh, you had Amy Rose, Rouge the Bat, Shadow the Hedgehog, uh, the Chaotic was in there. Um, but Season 1 and Season 2 of Sonic X, basically Sonic is allies, which was Tails, Knuckles, Amy, Cream and Cheese, were all, were all involved in, were all sent into the real world thanks to Chaos Emeralds and Chaos Control. Sonic was put into a, a home, or was placed in a pool in a home, with a character named Chris Thorndike, the Thorndike family who was rich. Um, eventually, the, um, his grandfather got involved in knowing the secret. Eventually, the butler knew the secret. And um, so Sonic, Tails, Amy, Cream and Cheese basically lived with the Thorndikes for a while. Um, Knuckles was originally very much a... Um, treasure hunter on his own. He often would get dece dece deceived by Robotnik. Um, was very much determined to return home. Um, and then also Rouge the Bat was there, ended up working with the FBI. Um, but the goal was to return home. And um, throughout seasons one and seasons two, which would ultimately go from like episodes one to episodes 51, where they would talk, where they would look at the goal of returning home. Um, I truly enjoyed this because it was really the, um, you know, it kind of like you had that hero villain concept of Sonic and Robotnik and having to overcome Robotnik or that was Dr. Eggman at the time. And um, ultimately the characters would return home except for, except for Sonic until Sonic eventually returned home and um, eventually Chris would enter their universe which leads to season three which <laughs> which was at that time i was not a fan of the of season three because i didn't like the whole metarex concept uh that focused around a character named cosmo who was an alien she had a love interest with tails there you know there was not much sonic versus eggman concept which it could have been, it could have easily been that way. Instead, it was like the whole group was fighting this whole Metarex. And then <coughs> ultimately, Cosmo would sacrifice herself while Sonic and Shadow 
who would um, ultimately take down the um, the Metarax and um, ultimately then the characters would return home. And um, you know, I I liked season one and season two better. I can understand about if viewers liked season three better. I would definitely recommend Sonic X. I think that it's pretty good. Um, a lot of the um, a lot of Japanese because review it with skepticism, even though it was originally made in Japan, it was intended to appeal to the United States. So, um, but I would definitely recommend it. It's um, interesting. Um, it's not dark. It's not, um, it's not dark as Sonic the Hedgehog was, but, um, but I, I mean, it's, it's a good watching if you wanted to watch a few episodes. It does appeal to kids too, so. Um, I definitely recommend it. Um, in November of 19, 2019, there will be a new movie coming out called the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, which will focus on Sonic and Robotnik slash Eggman. And, um, you know, it, I'm curious to see when it, when it comes out. Um, you know, Sonic's legacy still continues today. The hero-villain concept, uh, the introduction of new characters, some of them have succeeded in making the main characters better. Some of them have not. Um, you have the Archie comics, which further introduces the characters. Several TV shows. Uh, they're all pretty good. I would recommend you to watch it. Um, and uh, the Sonic, the Sonic legacy still continues today. Um, I would encourage if any, if if kids are younger, to go into Sonic the Hedgehog. Or I would also recommend with Mario and Luigi and. You know, or the Nintendo characters. I mean, it's it's a really, really good, um, good starting point if you're really wanting to focus on, um, you know, hero and villain concepts and just a really good introduction into the creations, the fantasies of creative being creative. Um, well, that will do it for this episode of History Now. I encourage you to watch future episodes. Have a great night, Lake Orion, and see you soon. Take care.